Hello, Dr. Mingo. This is Patrick Cook uh, giving out the demo for uh, the V.01 version of Shamrock's extraction of uh, the grounding and the metadata, uh, the meta model from regulation. So I created a few different um, uh, Python modules here, and I'll kind of walk through them real quick. Uh, kind of give you some context, and then I'll, I'll play it and, and do a quick demonstration. But uh, the first um, Python module here is is where I actually pull in the regulation in this method called Shamrock, and it takes a regular a regulation list. And if I scroll up to the top here, I have several files uh, that I've created, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, these XML files, which are pull down from the GPO data set. I have a, a HIPAA version, uh, I have some one for COPPA, and then I also have one for GLBA. And the one that I'll demonstrate here is uh, XML 45164306, which is the HIPAA version of it right here. Let's quickly go to uh, this particular location. So as we can see, the HIPAA, the, uh, the actual file location is on my desktop here, and let's just take a quick uh, navigate over here real quick. Let's see if we can go directly to it, and here it is, and let's pull up the file, specifically 306. Let's look at 306 here. And you can see this is the version uh, from the, the GPO that I pulled down and saved uh, locally, uh, and you can see the kind of the uh, breakdown of this file uh, and it has these uh, standards in here to, can, to include some uh, some metadata to include the heading a little bit about the, the history here uh, the ancestors it's called uh, in the file as well as the actual provision uh, for this particular section which is uh, 160 CFR 164 306 and each one of these provisions are captured uh, in here and so what I do is I take this particular XML file uh, and on the desk and I read it in in a uh, in a method called scan. Let me just go back to scan here. And scan, I, I see if we, if we go back to the init file here, we'll see that uh, I call sh Shamrock regulation list here where it's initialized. Uh, up here from this particular variable here. And this particular uh, variable is a list that's captured from this particular, which is a file prefix of HIPAA, which is this particular location here on my desktop, plus the actual file name uh, right here. So I take that in as a particular list. Right now it's just a list of one. But it pulls it in uh, here and, and it's called into this method. This method is actually taken over uh, and given to this method called Shamrock. Shamrock takes a list of regulations and it takes, uh, goes through the regulations in a for loop and it takes the regulations and loop through there. And the first thing I call is this uh, method called scan.init, which is, uh, it is, it actually reads the file in. So, um, as I was saying here that uh, you take Shamrock in, take this list of regulations in, and I call uh, scan.init. So let's hop over to scan.init. And so scan.init, this is the init method in the scan, uh, scan uh, 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 file here. And it just prints out starting the scan. And it reads in this XML file. Here's a reading XML file. And it just takes this uh, XML file and it uses this, uh, this method, uh, this element tree. To read that file in and then create this tree of the XML file. And then what it returns is the root node of that XML file and it returns it back to the init. And then now I have this, this root node here. And again, I kind of describe it here. It takes a, a regulation here, which is a string of an XML file, and it returns a tree type. And then once I return a tree type, what I do is then I process or I take this file through a preprocessor. And so I have this preprocessor file here, and then I, I'll take it through that. 
And so the preprocessor uh, takes in, and here's the preprocessor.init, and it starts the preprocessor, uh, and it takes this, uh, and then it ends up getting this result from this process and this data. And so I pass it in the, the root node and the regulation as a string so it can kind of print print out where that file was um, when it, it did that. So here's process node. It takes the, the regulation, uh, puts it into a dictionary. It takes actually regulate and it writes that out, that string out uh, for this particular regulation. And it goes in and, and it does this recursively to get the, the, the toad, to get the text from the node. So it reads that XML file one, line by line and it stores it into uh, this dictionary. And so as we you see here, it calls this get text. And here's what get text does. And it just does, uh, it reads through each one of those files and it, it strips down all the pair, it, it reads the paragraph tags. And then once it reads the paragraph tags, what it does is it just creates this text, uh, joining these uh, strings together uh, and then prints it out and stores it as well. And as if we do find a par uh, paragraph chat, what I did was was put a uh, a unique identifier in uh, in that particular uh, for that statement because I was putting it into a dictionary because it needs to be a key value pair, uh, and I wanted to make sure that I had the text and I had something that was unique that I can pull from and I would use some, at some point later. And if it didn't not have anything there, uh, I would put out none in the inner text, and I would continue the process. And so it returns back to the initialization here. And once I pre-process it, I take it to this process where I call clean results. And let's take it over to clean. And once we look at clean, you see it goes through also the initialization process here. And it calls this method called sanitize. If I take a look at sanitize, it takes that uh, that dictionary in, and it actually starts to put in uh, this metadata. So it'll take it out the uh, CF title that was in the original XML file. It takes this CFR title here. Uh, let's go back to clean. Uh, it takes the section number. It takes the then it, it concatenates or it adds together the CFR and the section number. And then I actually um, put some metadata in the file that I could use for processing this as part of Shamrock. Then I take the headers uh, from that from that file and I put I put it into this this dictionary. So I separate now this JSON result into a metadata section and then a header section and then the body is just the content of the regulations uh, that I'll have here put into this area called content. And then it returns back, uh, back to init here, and this is where I go through the classification, and this is where I stop. And we'll look at the classification metadata here, meta model, and then here is where uh, I, I I do the part where I talked about the grounding uh, and the meta model. And so, in in order for me to read line by line each regulation. Uh, what I did was I created this, uh, here's this meta model, and so I pull this dictionary in, uh, and now I have the meta model, and then I go out and print each, each provision line by line, and that's what you'll see. And when we see here pre, each, print each provision, what I do is I take the key value pairs out of, out of this, each one of them, and I print out the metadata, the key and the value, uh, I'll take a look if it's the key, if it's the header, I'll do one thing. But if it's the body, which is where the the information that we're looking for, for each line of the provision, I'll then I'll begin to process that data. And so now I'll take this particular text out of the pro value and I'll print the text. And you'll see the te text being printed. And then I'll take a, a moment to turn a break so you can see it. And then uh, I'll classify with this matcher. And so here's where I use uh, Spacey as a as a as a component to be able to read uh, the specific um, part of speech tag. I'll read the uh, the dependency graph. I'll read the information so I can match 
what a particular phrase is or a particular token within within the actual provision. So each each statement is broken down into a provision. And, and I'll kind of walk through that as as I begin to demo. So I want to kind of go over kind of a high level uh, what each step was doing, and then we'll and I'll show the can show the demo. So let me let me stop here and let me go to where I can show the demo. Okay, I'm about to run the actual code here. Let me just start it here. Uh, it may go too fast. Uh, I must maybe increase the timer a little bit so we can see. Okay, so it's like it's going. So, so as you can see here, it, the key value metadata I talked about, the value here is this unique ID, and it's pulled in the title, uh, and uh, this is the, the metadata. And then the header information that comes directly from the GPO data set, you'll see that it has the CR title, uh, the text, commercial practices, the date, their origin date, et cetera, et cetera, that was out of the title, and then the body part. And so when we look at the body, it reads each provision, and then if there's uh, content within the provision that it will uh, it will be able to show the grounding, which whether or not is it something is an obligation or whether something is a um, or uh, a prohibition or a permission, it would be able to show that. In addition to that, it's also capturing the meta model, which is the subject, verb, and object. And so it prints out the original. Uh, provision here is an operator is required to obtain verified parental consent before any collection. This is the entire content of the provision. Uh, and then you can see that I extract the subject, the verb, and the object from this using this particular, particular matcher, which is SBO 100. And then it pulls out the subject, which is an operator. And then it pulls out the verb, which is is required to obtain, and then it, it pulls out the object, which is uh, ver verifiable parental consent. And so, uh, and here is provision number two. It says the operator must give the parent the option to consent. And as you can see here, it, it was able to recognize uh, using this pattern, SBO 101, an operator must give the parent the option and then uh, after the option, then there's a string of other text that goes into uh, to what I'm considering the uh, the, the multi-level um, object here. Because what happens is you'll have a, a subject, a verb, and a direct object, but you'll have these prepositions, uh, prepositional phrases that are kind of contiguous. So uh, in the next iteration, I'll be able to pull those out and be able to to, to categorize them as nouns or be able to categorize them as uh you know uh you know supporting the object or supporting the uh a particular component of the actual sentence so uh that'll be the next iteration at any rate you'll you'll see it goes down here and it recognizes again uh where the soul uh of collecting an online contacting with the parent child is to provide the notice and obtain but uh it goes if the operator has not obtained parental consent and then it, it, it says, for after a reasonable time from the date of the information, the operator must delete such information. And you see it captured here, recognizing this pattern SB001, the operator must delete such information. So it goes on and, and, and recognize those areas throughout the provision, and I put in how it's captured in the time after it's uh, finished and then once it starts. So then when we look at these 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 tags here, SBO one hundred and SV01, how what what is, what does that mean and what is the significance of that? When I take a look at uh these uh these matchers that I have here, here's SV01. And I, I, I was able to identify and uh let me just bring up one other component here. Uh, let's just go. Where is uh... so uh, what I what I did in order to come up with 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 that 
particular matter was use the content of the actual provision itself. So here's copper 0001 here, and it talks about an operator is required to obtain verifiable parental consent. And as you can see here, I was able to identify what the part of speech was or what the part of speech tag was. Uh, and then I actually uh, identified the dependency of that particular token from that particular string of text. And so you can see here as and has a tag uh, of DT, which is really a determiner. Uh, and then same thing would, would be if I were to add the part of speech here. But for the most part, I just in, identify the lexical component of that particular text. And I use that to put together a way to identify patterns within the regulatory text to be able to say, hey, here is my nominal subject, right? In this particular case, operator is a passive uh, portion of this nominal subject, but I'm able to identify the subject, which is really the actor of a particular provision. And then you have these auxiliary verbs here, and then you have the actual root verb, uh, and then you have this uh, infinitive here, and then the actual verb, and, and, uh, and these adjectives, et cetera, et cetera. And so once I was able to identify these particular tags and dependencies components in here, then I was able to create a pattern from the text to be able to use that to say, now when you see this string of tokens and operator or uh, whatever the tokens are, you will be able to identify this as the subject, the verb, and the object of a particular provision. And they come in different, in different components. Uh, different uh, different patterns, if you will. And so as you can see here, here's one SB100. It has a determiner followed by uh, an, uh, a nominal subject passive type followed by uh, a verb and then a root verb and from the dependent and into the infinitive followed by another verb and a string of adjectives then followed by the direct object. And so if we go back and look at the actual um, uh, pattern that was matched, you'll see that it matched with SB100, which in turn aligns with this particular pattern right here, SB100. And if you see uh, the pattern SBB101, you'll see it, it, it identified with this particular pattern, which means it had a, a determiner followed by a nominal subject, followed by a modality, a modal verb, followed by the actual a root verb, followed by another determiner, a noun, a terminal, and then a direct object. And so when you look at the patterns that comes out of the, the, the actual provisions, you can begin to, to put together uh, a, 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 a way to identify the subject verb and the object, which is who's doing the action, the actual motor verb, the motor verb aligns with the actual, uh, the motor verb aligns with the, you know, wh whether it's, uh, uh, is it the object, uh, uh, Factor, which is whether something is obligation, uh, obligatory, or permissive, or prohibitive, and all of those things. That modal verb identifies that, and then the action is the root verb that that follows the modal verb, and then the direct object, the direct object is whose the actual uh, option, uh, the action is taking place on. And so that is the foundation of finding uh, all of the the, the, the components from the provision, and, and then quite naturally, there are other parts of this particular uh, provision, right? There, there's these, there's these, uh, uh, these uh, propositional phrases that add more context uh, to the actual uh, statement that's, that's, being, uh, that's being acted upon, acted upon in each provision. So to kind of go back and a quick summary here, I have... Um, in the init, I actually read in the XML file. The XML file puts this into a, a root tree. I parse the tree and I create uh, a, 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 a Python dictionary with a set of key value pairs. The key, and, and, and within the key value pairs, I, I divide it into three sections. One section is uh, the actual metadata. And the metadata can be extended to talk about uh, you know whatever that's required 
uh, for a particular uh, domain of the provision, but you have the metadata here, and I included in the metadata some unique ID, uh, some category that it may be associated with, an actual title, uh, a priority, if you need a, you know, a priority and a degree of necessity. And I'll, I'll add a little bit more explanation around how this can be uh, expounded on. And then the second part is actual header. This header is taken directly from the actual CFR. So you can make a direct correlation between the provision that we're talking about and the actual uh, content of the provision so that can uh, support the traceability. And then next is the actual line by line provision. We take that out of the XML and we review line by line each provision and we make sure that we capture them uh, line by line. So A, general requirements really didn't have any modal verbs, any sentences associated with it, it was just a header. But as soon as we get to the body part uh, that talks about a provision on what something must be done or what something or you're permitted to do, we take a look at that and we begin to look at the grounding and we begin to look at the, uh, the meta model. And the meta model is really broken down into, uh, you know, the who's doing what, uh, the actual action that's taking place and the modality associated with that. And we capture that. Uh, as the as the foundational element of what this particular provision is talking about, and in this particular case, we look at this our operator is required to obtain this uh, parental consent. We know that the an operator is the actual uh, actor, and then it's required is really the the, mo the mo mo modality here, which really means must uh, means that the operator is obligated, and then obligated to do what really to obtain parental consent. And so quite naturally, there's other components up here on why and, and the purpose of this. And so here is a temporal element that that we haven't included yet, but we will. But as again, I talked about these prepositional phrases, they add more context. And we look at this particular uh, prepar uh, prepositional phrase here, this is before, and it gives you a temporal aspect. So in, in, in meaning that if we're going to be required to get this consent, these are some of the things that we must do first, right? Before you can do, before you can collect or before you can use or before you can disclose personal information from children, you must get this consent. So this is before prepositional phrase add additional context and that will have to be in the next iteration uh, of, of this particular element because we're able to identify the modality, we're able to extract information from the actual regulation. We're able to take each line and interrogate each line to find out what this provision is all about in isolation. And even when they have uh, multiple sentences in there, we can break those down into, into uh, one or two sentences to really get the, the, the main idea out of each provision. And so that's, that's pretty much uh, wraps it up. And I hope you, and, and I try to make this as short as possible. Uh, but there's a lot of information here, uh, and I'll review it, and I'll try to condense it a little bit more. But I did want to get this out in front of you. You see that I actually have a, a, a the first V.01 version of extracting requirements from these regulations, specifically from the GPO data set, using the XML file directly coming from the GPO uh, website, saving it off as a file, and then running it through this particular uh, 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 application, extracting the information from the application and identifying the pertinent elements uh, of this. Now, there's still some work to be done here and primarily associated with the prepositional phrases that add more context and then um, having it being in the conditional so you can actually put, place it into uh, the uh, either swirl or some rule format. The ultimate rule format that we're going to use is going to be legal rule ML. And legal rule ML is an XML format that en enables you to use uh, the, the feasible logic so you can have these, uh, these these statements either be true or false or whether something uh, someone is obligated or permissive, uh, permitted to do something and you can you can run it through a reasoner and get get a, a, a get a result. And because it's defeasible, if some new information comes in, you can update 
get with that new information and you can get the, the, the latest result from that. So I'll stop there and then um and I'll and I'll, I'll send this to you and then we can talk about uh what I've what I've come to uh come up with so far. Thank you. <laughs> 